some of us, this show, had suspicions from the outset that there wasn't much evidence that this had actually happened. What do we now know? Well, we now know from this whistleblower who prefers to call himself Alex, we know his real name, and we've got proof that he did work at the OPCW. He was an inspector, one of the team of about nine people who went to Damascus and to Douma to pick up samples on the ground and to talk to witnesses and check the whole thing out. Now, he took these samples, but the, the main point is that chlorine gas degrades rapidly in the air, so that coming in two weeks later, you wouldn't find anything. But what you would find is that the gas can contaminate or affect other chemicals in the env natural environment, yes. so-called chlorinated organic chemicals. But the, the difficulty is that they exist anyway in the natural environment anyway, and in water and so on. And so the crucial thing is the levels. Were there more so, higher levels of chlorinated organic chemicals found after the alleged gas attack than there would have been in the normal environment? And when they got back to the Netherlands, to The Hague, where the OPCW has its headquarters, the samples were sent off to designated laboratories. Then there was a weird silence developed. Nobody told the inspectors what the results of the analysis was. And it was only by chance that the inspector found out that three weeks earlier the results had come in and they showed no difference at all. There were no higher levels of chlorinated organic chemicals in the areas where the alleged attack had happened, where there's some suspicious cylinders had been found by opposition activists. And so there, it didn't seem possible that there could have been a gas attack because the levels were just the same as in the natural environment. Well, I'm, I'm confused by two...